Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be counting down the top 10 weapons that you can farm easily in Borderlands 3. We're talking no arms race, no takedowns, or circle of slaughters. These are the best weapons that are quick and easy to farm. I'll be ranking them on both how good they are and how often they drop, with their drop rate taking precedence. And if you're just getting started in Borderlands 3, you'll want to wait until the max level cap before you spend much time farming these. Of course, I'll also be letting you know where you can get them and give you tips on raising their damage. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like or hey, maybe you'd want to subscribe or follow me on Twitter and let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the best weapons you can get quickly in Borderlands 3 with the Kalsin, a dull SMG that can come in all the elements. It drops 16.5% of the time from Captain Traunt at the end of Athenus, but only if you're on Mayhem 6 or higher. Captain Traunt is one of the easiest boss fights in the game, best fought with shock or radiation weaponry, and is unlocked early in the story, leaving him open to farm for everyone after raising your Mayhem levels. What's not so great about farming a Kalsin is getting that perfect times 2 variant and having one of its firing modes be fully auto. However, I find the standard version to be best, especially for my Tosis modes. Speaking of modes, this gun is definitely best on her thanks to its double phase splash damage as enemies become stuck with sticky bombs before they explode in their face. Those two phases ensure that it's always dealing damage even when you're reloading which helps keep your ability stacked, continually procking that lifesteal if you're Amara or Zane. It's great on everyone, certainly a top tier SMG, and is one of the best the base game has to offer. Moving on now to the Monarch, a rapid firing assault rifle that can come in all the elements and drop 16.5% of the time from Killer Bolt round here in Lectra City, and it's another Mayhem 6 plus weapon. You unlock this boss fight by picking up the quest Kill Killer Vault from Moxie aboard Sanctuary. He's not the easiest or fastest to kill, being immune to shock with possible immunity phases. Radiation weapons are again best for defeating them, and you can down yourself after completing it to repeat the fight without having to save and quit. The Monarch is an absolute monster, riddling your enemies with 4 bullets per shot at an incredible rate, and you can even get an 8 palleted version which is unreal. If it wasn't powerful enough already, you can double its damage output by cosplaying as a turret and pulling out its bipod. You won't be able to move, or you won't move very fast, but you will be even more devastating. It's a fantastic weapon on everyone, but definitely shines brightest on a fadeaway flak, and whether mobbing or bossing, it'll drain health bars almost as fast as it fires. Time now for the Soul Render, a gun's love and tentacles assault rifle that comes in all the elements and drops 15% of the time from Tom or Zam around here in Heart's Desire. Farming a Soul Render is one of the quickest things to do in the game, for one the spawn point is literally right there, but you can farm Tom and Zam infinitely as well, simply by killing one of them and then travelling back to the spawn point. If you think you've just spotted the perfect Soul Render on the ground, you'll want to pick it up and test it to make sure it's fully auto. Don't let Dahl get you. The Soul Render is a ghost assault rifle, summoning the spirit of its former owner alongside its bullets. Demon Skulls will periodically shoot from its barrel and home into nearby enemies, dealing some incredible splash damage. Its bullets dish out enough hurt on their own, but those skulls take it to the next level, flattening enemies you aren't even shooting at. If you're looking for a good assault rifle you can get quickly, then this is the one. Up next is the Complex Root, a bounty of blood snipe rifle that drops 1 in 3 times from Lenny Dixon out here in Ashfall Peaks. 
DLC 3 gave us easy farms for some great legendaries and the complex route is one of those, made even better through the 20% snipe rifle buff. It fires elemental lasers in a twin burst pattern that trigger a deadly array of explosions. From the impact point, lights will twinkle, but they're not little stars, they're supernovas, erupting with deadly force. It's so powerful that it's pretty much impossible to mob with on a splash damage mose, downing everyone, including you. And saying that, it is a sniper rifle that values your ammo pool, which you can mob with for extended periods. Where it's pretty much broken is on an eraser Zane who can drop countless bosses with a single shot. It's overall a phenomenal sniper rifle that does things a little differently. Next up, the Hellwalker, an always fire breathing shotgun that will drop every 1 in 10 kills off a bro dog you fight around here in the Splinterlands. Although the drop rate on the Hellwalker is lower than others on this list, it's pretty much a one and done farm as its parts are fixed, so each one is perfect. While farming there's also a 10% chance to grab a red line which is a fantastic bossing shotgun. The Hellwalker is your traditional sawn off shotgun firing 10 searing pellets that'll crucify your opposition. Because it's made by Jacobs, critical hits are devastating ricocheting all 10 of its pallets which rip apart nearby enemies. Normally it will only fire the one round before having to load another, but you can fire even more by equipping items with enough mag size boosts. It's a great gun, especially in flex hands due to its critical effectiveness, but anyone can use it to cleanse the borderlands of sin. Moving on to the Unkempt Herald, a powerful hand cannon that can come in all the elements and drops 1 in 3 times from Cabot Dowd, you fight around here in Blood Sun Canyon as part of the Bounty of Blood. The Unkempt Herald is almost as deadly as it was in Borderlands 2 and that's saying something. It consumes 2-3 to three ammo per shot and fires a line of explosive projectiles that deal some incredible damage. You'll struggle to find a more powerful one shot pistol than this. And good news is, it's easy to get. There is one thing to look out for while farming an unkempt Harold, and that's its projectile count. Although it will say either times 3 or times 4, they both fire the exact same 7 projectiles, and the high number will just cost you more ammo. When you do have the right one, it'll blow apart enemies with ease, and if you're looking for a splash damage pistol that you can get quickly, then look no further than this. Time now for the Flipper, another Bounty of Blood weapon. This one is a Mali 1 SMG that drops 1 in 3 tons from Minosaur. You fight around here at the start of Blood Sun Canyon. The Flipper's raw power comes from its unique firing pattern that causes more projectiles to be added to each shot as you fire, without consuming any extra ammo. It starts at 1, peaks at 9, and will cause some serious injury when it's all warmed up. It's another top tier and easy to obtain legendary from the Bounty of Blood, serving up heavy damage on all Vol Hunters. The fact that it deals splash damage is another bonus, but its projectile count is the real winner here. The trick to maximizing its damage is in extending its magazine, either through gear or skills so you can fire the full 9 shots for as long as possible. Mose has it easy with redistribution, allowing her to fire without ever loading in another magazine and Zane can do that too with the Digiclone Regen Ammo Anointment. Next up, the Light Show, a blood of pistol that comes in all the elements and drops like most of the Bounty of Blood weapons a nice 1 in 3 times, this time from Lazodactyl, you fight around here in the Obsidian Forest. The Light Show is pretty much the perfect gun, firing 4 pellets at a good rate that deal high damage. It does have an unusual projectile pattern where its barrel rotates as you shoot, causing you to cut circles into your enemies. That can make it hard for you to hit criticals, but players like Black won't see that as much of a problem. That does make it best used in closer ranges where you can land every shot where you want it, 
and its projectile count just adds to the fun, providing even more damage, making it great on both the bossing and mobbing fields. Coming in hot, it's the Free Radical, a melee one blaster that belongs to the director's cut. It can only come in shock and drops 30% of the time from Beef Pliskin around here in Karas Canyon. The Free Radical is probably the best all-round weapon in the game, dealing up to and over 100,000 damage per shot and firing at a fully automatic pace. It always fires shock orbs that spawn a regular projectile on impact which will turn around and take it to your opponent again. That gives it the added boost that it doesn't even need as your targets will often be fried before the secondary projectiles have a chance to land. It's more powerful than the plasma coil and is exceptionally easier to get. It does come in the times 2 variant but the standard version is widely regarded as being better and even the weakest one will put huge dents in health bars. If you're looking to make the game a whole lot easier, then try this one simple trick. Bad guys hate it. Before number one is revealed, let's go over some honorable mentions. First up is the Trevenator, a shotgun that drops 15% of the time from Private Beans. Round here in Athenus as part of the quest Invasion of Privacy. This quest is unlocked early in the base game and although may be annoying, is worth it for this gun. The Trevenator is a burst fire melee one shotgun that has absolutely no charge time. It's all of the good with none of the bad, dealing high splash damage. That makes it a great weapon for Moe's, one of her top shotguns, but all characters will find a lot of worth here. Next up is The Hive, a Torg rocket launcher which will drop 1 in 10 times from Princess Tarantella II, you fight around here in the Splinterlands. The Hive truly is a spectacular gun, firing robotic nests that hide a deadly secret. From those nests, homing rockets will emerge which seek out and hunt down everyone, culminating in a fantastic mobbing launcher. The good thing about farming for it is the fact that, like the Hellwalker, it comes with fixed parts, aside from its radiation or corrosive elements. While you're at it, you can pick up the Roids and Storms, another great base game Torg weapon. Lastly, how could we forget about the Sandhawk, a dial sniper rifle that can only come in the elements and drop 16.5% of the time from Katagawa Jr. around here in Atlas HQ. This is another dial farm where you need to be wary of those firing modes, but the good thing is Katagawa Jr's health doesn't scale at Mayhem 10, making him easy to kill. The Sandhawk is an insanely powerful weapon, spitting out 7 high powered rounds at over 7 rounds a second. It is fantastic while bossing, dropping them almost instantly on each and every Bolt Hunter. Mobbing time is generally short due to its high ammo consumption, but it is possible to counter. We are here, we made it to the top spot, and who's sitting beside us? It's the Crit, a Mali 1 SMG that is only obtained by making it rain over at Moxie's bar. Tipping her enough will have her send it to you via mail, and because there's no combat involved, you can skip directly to Mayhem 10 if you're not there already, and pick it up, making it the best weapon in the game to get started at the top level. She also has a chance to send through a hail, which is a good assault rifle and definitely worth having. The crit has that name for a reason, holding a massive 150% critical damage bonus, which is incredibly unusual for anything outside of Jacobs. It always comes in shock with the larger than normal mag size and will tear it up wherever it's needed. It's one of a very select number of weapons in the game that heal you for a portion of damage dealt, and on Mayhem 10 it'll fill your health bar pretty much instantly. If you're after even more damage, you can try for a binary variant which doubles the projectile count, and will see enemies crumble at almost twice the speed. I don't know why, but it is incredibly slippery, causing it to occasionally slip from your grasp, but that's a small price to pay for the mountains of damage it deals, so you'll just need to pick it up whenever it falls. 
So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 best and easiest weapons to farm for in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.